Hey everyone, it's me, your favorite Dredgen, Fallout here, and let's talk about The Reckoning Tier 2. I'm assuming if you're here, you already know what The Reckoning is, and you want tips or advice on how to beat it. And that's what I'm here for, albeit a tad late, get off me. You want my best advice, summed up in two words? Super abuse. Yeah, that's pretty much it, and no, I'm not kidding. The Reckoning Tier 2 is broken up into three parts, and each of them kind of boils down to just you and your team abusing your supers a lot. Yeah, you'll still have to shoot some things, but the teams that succeed are gonna be the ones that bring exotics to the table that you can abuse repeatedly. And you know the usual suspects. Warlocks, you got your Skull of Dire Ahamkara. Man, that one is really good. Put that one together with a Slova Bomb, and you'll be getting your Nova Bomb repeatedly over and over. Throw one, hit enough enemies, and bam, you get another one right away. That one's really helpful for the current week because you got Void Singe turned on. That's another thing. The Reckoning is kind of like a Nightfall. There are rotating modifiers that affect gameplay, so make sure you're paying attention to what they are. Got sidetracked. What other exotics are good? Phoenix Protocol for your Well of Radiance. That one will really help you during the bridge fight. Hunter, you got the Orpheus Rig Boots and Tether, always a classic combo, no real shocker there. In a pinch, you could probably also put on the Shards of Galanor, especially if the burn that week happened to be Solar. Titans, you got Ursa Furiosa and the Doomfang Pauldrons for sure. Really anything you can do to make sure you're just using your super over and over again in combination with your teammates. That's about 80% of what the Reckoning Tier 2 is. I really can't emphasize that enough. Alright, anyway, you start off by potentially dumping a middling moat, aka a blue moat, into the moat bank before the Reckoning begins. If you don't have your middling synthesizer upgraded yet, make sure you're talking to the drifter at the tower and completing his bounties. One of them lets you upgrade the synthesizer, aka the moat maker. Now the recommended light level for tier 2 is 670, but you don't need to be that high to beat it. I'd probably recommend around 660 minimum to 665. I've heard of people beating it with fire team members in the 659 range, but that's probably pushing it a little bit. Get your light level up, or, you know, get friends with higher light level than you. Okay, you dunk your blue middling moat, which guarantees your reward at the end when you complete tier 2. Take note, I said when, not if. The real step 1 is believing in yourself, Guardian. And remember, before you go into the portal, you can pop over to the area directly to the right of the moat bank and activate a raid banner, which gives you full ammo and super energy. Now you're into part 1 of the Reckoning Tier 2. You have to rapidly defeat enemies in the area, and you have 5 minutes and 30 seconds to do so. That is plenty of time. A, B, K. Always be killing, because because if you aren't, your progress tracker will slowly decrease. This part 1 should really be an indicator on how the rest of the Reckoning Tier 2 is going to go for you. This part should be not really a problem at all. Especially if you hit the raid banner before popping in, you already have full super, plenty of ammo, just frag out with your team. Coordinate and abuse your supers together, you should be okay. When you're done with part 1, it's time for part 2, the Bridge of Folly. Here's where things get a little hairy. You have this big ass bridge that you have to cross but you can only do so by capturing zones on the bridge one at a time. While standing in the zone, you will be attacked by a ton of Taken, and I just mean an absolute ton. Shadow Thrall, Majors, Snipers, you name it. If you have one in the fire team, Well of Radiance will really come in handy right about now. I've seen people also use the Ward of Dawn pretty effectively here, if you want to go that route, but my group dropped a Well of Radiance on each and every zone that appeared on the bridge. We were fine. If you're throwing Nova Bombs left and right with the Skull of Dire Ahamkara like I was. Make sure you let your teammates know when you're throwing one. You know, just so they don't try and destroy the target that you're about to hit, that way you get more Nova Bomb energy back, you know the deal. The whole bridge phase is where the super abuse really gets dialed up to 11. And make sure that you're keeping your eye on the zone capture meter, because once you're done capturing, you have to move quickly. Each and every time you capture a zone, the in-game clock will reset to 40 41 seconds on the dot. Why 41? I don't know. I wondered that too. It's kind of an odd number, kind of strange, kind of upsetting me a little in a way I can't explain. But yeah, here's the sequence of events. You go to the zone, you drop a Well of Radiance, or a Ward of Dawn, you abuse supers repeatedly and live, 
capture the zone and you run quickly to the next zone, rinse and repeat. When you complete the sixth and final zone, you're on to stage three. Go into a portal and run around in the dark and play keep away from two Jagoff hive knights who want to pound you into the ground. Let me explain. First, you have to find the hermit who will spawn randomly after a few seconds. He's a major who glows in the dark. Find him real quick, you kill him. When he dies, he'll drop a well of light on the ground and by standing in that well, you'll do bonus damage to the two Chad knights who are chasing you around in the dark. When you kill those two knights, it's game over. Now, as you can imagine, these knights are beefy and if your light level is too low, they can one-shot ground pound you. The good news is, dying doesn't end the encounter, just makes the whole thing take longer. Which, I guess, is bad because you only have 4 minutes and 30 seconds to get the job done, but wiping on a death would have been awful. Oh, by the way, while avoiding these knights, you'll have to deal with a metric butt-ton of Taken. I really recommend bringing some kind of weapon here that works well with crowd control. I brought the Thunderlord for a little chain lightning action. Another piece of advice, you need to know when you should revive teammates and when you shouldn't. If the knights are right on top of your teammate's body, let the timer go out and have your teammates respawn outside on their own in safety. Getting your teammates farmed repeatedly by the knights is kind of hilarious, but not advantageous to winning the encounter. Maybe just do it once. Laugh at your teammate, pretend you had no idea that it would happen, and then tell me about it later down in the comment section. But yeah, stay together. Clear out the ads if they're overwhelming you too much, and abuse supers when you can. Hopefully if you used nothing but supers all the way across the bridge, you'll have plenty of power ammo saved up to hit the knights with. When they're dead, hey, congratulations, you did it. Be sure to collect your reward back at the moat bank and keep farming it for more gear if you want. If you have any advice of your own that you'd like to share about the encounter, leave it down below as a YouTube comment for other people to learn from. Also, if you're listening to this video, do me a favor, head on over to twitch.tv slash falloutplays and drop me a follow there because I stream all the friggin' time, usually over the weekend, and you should come hang out when I play live. Oh, and uh, click like on this video, not because you like it, but just because I told you to. Thanks for watching, hope you learned something, see you next time.